Bağzı billahi mineşşeytanirracim, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, Atiyyullah, Atiyyur Rasulü ulul amri minkum and always a reminder for myself and abdukul ajis al-da'ifu, miskinu, zalim, mujahal. And but for the grace of Allah that we're still in existence in this holy month and alhamdulillah blessed weekend for celebrating the birth of the most blessed soul in all of paradises in which Allah granting the soul of the daughter of Sayyidina Muhammad Fatima Zahra immense realities of the secrets of khaliq and creation and that everything that comes into existence by a secret, that secret and all secrets given to the reality of the soul of Sayyidina Muhammad and Prophet giving that as an inheritance to the soul and the reality of Sayyidatina Fatima Salam and infinite other realities. We ask that Allah dress us and bless us from ishq and muhabbat, that stations that can never be achieved by, by worshipness, by fasting but by good character and manners. And many times and recently Somebody emailed saying that, we sent the, the post somewhere and I was astonished because of the backlash that the leaders of a chat group and leaders of this or that started to attack and say very, very sort of belligerent things, awful things and started to attack you, attack your, your teaching system, everything and everything is a reminder that this way is based on manners and the assumption that people have that, oh everybody has these manners, is false. And Allah allows us to understand the beauty of the teacher that we have and what was taught to us would then be conveyed to our students. And in our youth and younger age when we would travel we would come across so many who claim to love Mawlana and love the teaching but Allah… As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. exposed that they were not taught to love someone and to just say that, make your prayers and follow them is incorrect, that you can't make rules against the way of Sayyidina Muhammad The problem when people feel they can make a rule that supersedes Islam. One, you'll create a immense amount of ignorance and bad-mannered people and that's within the family of tariqah. Tonight is not about outside but inside because that's the sadness attached with Ahlul Bayt. Their issues were not from outside but the issues that continuously struggled against was the battle inside the family of Islam. Inside for us the tariqahs and the tariqah ways 
And that's why when we teach the students, you merely post and run, don't engage anyone because we understand the system of wild dogs. Unfortunately, the students are under the assumption all must have been trained the same as if uh, everybody got the, the same degree. And in our youth when we travelled we realised that very quick, absolutely not. Many claim to have loved the way, loved the shaykhs and loved with all sincerity and absolutely had no manners. And you could not distinguish them between a, a prisoner and a prison in the middle of South America. The belligerence, the nastiness of character, the nastiness of mouth and action as if like a hoodlum from street gangs and still same demeanour. And they say they lead zikr, they lead groups and they're in different areas. They're, they brought their hoodlum and hooliganism into Islam and they run it with the same demeanour. And that's the sadness because this is the month of guidance, this is the month of Qamarun and what this holy surah is guiding for us and this event happening in this month is not a coincidence. We say ayah, fifth ayah, if we can read Shaykh Shahid from Surat Qamarun, Qamar uh, 54. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم حكمة بالغة فما تغن النذر صدق الله العلي العظيم Wa barak the Rasul Kareem and that in this month of guidance Allah sends a reminder that even in the face of extensive wisdom but a warning does not avail them. That they see the product, they see the teachings, they see all these realities, uh, immense amounts of wisdom and knowledge is coming out but it does nothing to them. So the next ayat al kareem Allah describes to Prophet so leave them, Ya Nabi, Ya Sayyidina Muhammad until the day that the caller calls to something forbidding. Means that in the face of these times of ignorance even with all the wisdom that people can give, the bad character people leave them, leave them to their destruction within their own hands. And when the system doesn't teach them and doesn't encourage them to seek knowledge, they become like a water that's not flowing. You know the water for wudu has to be like a river that's flowing. Stagnant water becomes spoiled because it's no longer fresh, it's no longer clean for wudu because elements, bacteria, everything starts to gather within it means our Islam and our reality and our knowledges must be in a constant continuous state flowing. When a group decide that, no, they reply, you don't need to seek any knowledge, just you pray the shaykh will take you to paradise. What part of the message of Sayyidina Muhammad was that? Nobody can take your path for you. It's not about that, it's about you have to follow the sharia, you have to wash, you have to pray, you have to do all those efforts and the greatest achievement 
is the servant that seeks knowledge. And Prophet describes, seek it all the way to China if you have to. Means from wherever you are seek the furthest bounties of realities and knowledges and that knowledge is power. Every word and kalam from Allah is a power upon the soul, is a fire against bad desires and bad character. The one whom is devoid of knowledge has no protection. He's in a state or she is in a state of ignorance and that ignorance then begins to rule them. So that's not Islam. Islam was not that you stay a stagnant water, wait in the corner somebody will pick you up and take you to your destination. But your Islam exactly meant what it, it says is that to submit and submission is a great fight. Like when people ask and they've asked us in, in New Age events, oh what is peace shaykh? It's the greatest fight you'll ever put in your life. It's not that you declare peace and sit by a tree and it comes to you. Prophet described peace is a great jihad more than fighting people. When you determine that you're going to seek a path of knowledge, shaitan now is on the other side saying, okay I'm going to call in 10 more shaitans to come after you. And that is the greatest struggle, means now the fight is on. The one who sits in ignorance, sits on their couch, does nothing, moves nothing, reads nothing, learns nothing is a, like the water of wudu is a soiled and of no value become najas, it even become dirty for people. Why? Because if you put it onto somebody they become dirty from it, it's no longer a wudu that cleans you. Imagine you take a filthy water from the toilet and throw it to somebody. They're in worse condition than when they didn't have wudu. Our life's purpose was to seek knowledge. Our life's purpose in tariqahs was to seek manners. So that's why then we travelled in those days. And we understood the extent of our manners by meeting people who had no manners. Otherwise you don't know what you have until you see other places. We travelled to Lefkaya and everyone thought that, oh there's going to be salawats everywhere and people are going to listen to salawats and make their zikrs and make their meditation. There was absolutely nothing. There was no salawats, we had to get permission to open up that cafe, play the salawats, teach the muraqabah. When Sultan and Awliya was alive they gave permission for that. Just assuming everybody in tariqah has good manners. Everybody in the masjid is going to govern themselves correctly, then you've already lost because shaitan went into paradise and took Adam and Eve outside in paradise and brought them down. So it means there is nowhere safe from shaitan. And he goes everywhere, Allah gave that permission. So our life was to, to achieve knowledges. Knowledges that are not dunya, so it means you're not studying accounting only for all your life but the knowledges that benefit the soul and the reality and my eternal journey and that was the greatest purpose. And we posted all the hadiths from Riyadh Salihin, the gardens of paradise which is the most, most popular Ahl Sunnah, a book of collective hadith and beautifully categorized people of zikr, seeking the people of knowledges. So which part of that, you know they make all these horrible comments and they say, oh this is against this, this is against but they give no proof and they slander and backbite. And as soon as you come across people like that, that's why don't engage shaitan, you're never supposed to engage shaitan. You're merely supposed to post because that becomes like you're travelling. 
where before people would travel with their shaykh and they would get to see the characteristics of people so that they would make their faith to become real, faith in action. Our way, our motto is faith in action. You can't read about somebody's charity, you have to go out and be charitable. And if you can't do the charity then support us to give to the people who can do the charity. Then post these articles, post these videos and if people are bold enough to make and, and their, their horrible character to come out then just merely observe and say, this is what the shaykh was talking about. That when somebody becomes a, a wild dog like foaming from their mouth saying horrible things, bad things, backbiting, backbiting a shaykh, backbiting an alim, backbiting Ahl al-Bayt, all of them in one package when you come against the shaykh. Then you can see that's what the shaykh was talking about. For whoever taught this person actually taught them nothing and that's the exact sickness of why they need those videos. So there are people who go around traveling, you don't need all these knowledges oh, because they don't have them. Just you pray and your shaykh will take you to paradise. Uh, that's against Islamic uh, aqeedah and creed. That somebody else will carry you and do your path for you or you're supposed to do all of your Islam and you're supposed to seek knowledge. And you're supposed to accompany a guide, means our whole life was to seek knowledges, seek realities and as a result of seeking knowledges we would have sought good manners because the foundation of all knowledge is based on akhlaq. And in the schools of tarbiyah that anyone who accompanied a shaykh, wanted to learn, went and sat with the shaykh, he should have been taught that one, how to talk, how to respond, how not to respond, how not to backbite, how not to slander. And that's again a learning for our students. So our students are taught, you're not supposed to engage anyone, so you merely post it. So you did the noble thing. Then look at the reaction of the other person, they became extremely belligerent. Now you know how they're outside of Islam. They're throwing all sorts of expressions that make them and push them outside of the boundary of Islam. Forget about Ahl Sunnah, as soon as you curse a shaykh, you curse their aqeedah, you curse their belief, you gave no proof, no dalil. That person left Islam and they have to immediately repent. But for our people it's good to watch and so this is what the shaykh is talking about. These people are not being taught any manners, for whoever taught them could not have taught them anything. Why do they respond like this? Why do they talk like this? Means even in the adab of food how it, food is, is such a small but important reality that Prophet described that when you go to eat it's a ni'mat from Allah Don't kick that ni'mat for Allah will punish you. As a result of going to eat something and you don't like it, you don't have to make a comment, put it gently aside. Because all of it is a blessings. If you don't like that flavor, well, who cares? Your manners should have taught you, say nothing and put that aside. Now come to something so much greater in importance. If you come across a reality that you don't understand, you come across a teacher you don't understand. You come across a teaching you don't understand from authorized guides whom have written ijazas from Allah Prophet all the way through Sultanul Awliya. When you don't understand something, stay quiet, stay silent, just say, thank you very much, pray for us and go your way. And that's the school of manners. Someone like that 
would have been taught by somebody who knows how to teach manners. When you don't like something, put it aside. You don't have to make all the comments, you don't have to make the sarcasms and criticisms, you don't have to begin to render attacks because you dig your own grave. You in no way harm the shaykh because anyone who slanders somebody actually shaitan is inspiring them to carry the burdens of that person. So that's also good for us. So when people are slandering, alhamdulillah because then Allah takes whatever sins we have and gives to them. Could be thousands of people the shaykh are involved with. So imagine the weight of those sins, they get to leave the shaykh and go on that person whom is backbiting. So it means that our way is only based on manners but it's an excellent experience for people to post everywhere. And if you encounter people with this horrific character, it's there for us to understand this is what the shaykh is talking about. These are the people who have absolutely no manners and they make a, a version of Islam that not understood, learn nothing, don't worry about anything, one person will carry you. That's not Islam because if you rely on that one person and you should fall or that person should fall. All your Islam is in the incorrect belief. Everything of Islam was to seek knowledge, to have the love for Allah the love for Sayyidina Muhammad the love for Holy Qur'an, the understanding of hadith and seeking ilm and knowledges. And the greatest of knowledges are that which are of an eternal reality, the knowledges of the soul and malakut. And the schools of adab teach what you don't know, what you don't understand, what you dislike, stay quiet and move on. And in regards to the family of Prophet it teaches us and, and the calamities of the Ahlul Bayt and the Holy Companions was jealousy. That the greatest sickness that Shaykh, why? why? Why is it happening? Which we're not allowed to ask why but we'll give you a why. That why are there certain people like this? Why are the people who come against and begin to attack and, and have so much to say but they don't know anything, they never read it, they never even understood it. They can't ever come back and say, oh this is line is incorrect, this is incorrect, nothing. Just throw out blanket sarcasms, why? And the why of why they killed Imam Hussain is the same why, they're jealous. And we describe that in the talks of Sayyidatina Maryam why they came to kill Sayyidina Isa why they came to kill Imam al Hussain is why they came and killed the holy companions because of jealousy that the most demonic characteristic of people is hasad. And when jealousy enters into a person, a shaykh, a person, a murid, doesn't matter what, there's no titles for Allah Either you cleaned yourself or you didn't clean yourself. When jealousy enters the heart of an insan, immediately it blocks them from seeing anything. And it's the hasad that causes a veil and that veil is like a veil over the eyes and the ears because they hear nothing and see nothing from that reality of that person. And the turuq is based on humility. They released a video just two days ago from our videos of Muharram and it's all about humility. And it's coming in now into Qamar to remind our, our people and our teaching and myself that of course people are jealous. When they don't understand a subject, they don't understand how you teach it, where you got this from, what's this reality, as soon as that jealousy comes they no longer can even hear what you have to say. 
it's completely blocked for them. And that's why Allah is describing in the ayat al that we read that even in the face of hikmat, like immense amounts of hikmah, they're not going to hear the warning. Means they're not hearing the hikmah, they're not hearing the knowledges. They're definitely when they look they're not seeing it because hasad has come and begin to veil them. And they begin as a result of hasad to begin to take actions. That's why he said the shaykh is nothing in comparison to holy people because in the history of Islam this is the history that doesn't matter what their station was if they became jealous they became veiled of who the other side was and they began to attack. And that was the great calamity because these people were calling azan the jealousy veiling them and on the other side they went and slaughtered the family of Sayyidina Muhammad But they called Azan, they were praying. These were not khawarij who left Islam, they were in Islam and making their salah and slaughtering on the other hand the family of Sayyidina Muhammad Why? Because jealousy that what you have we don't have. What you represent, we don't have that. And for whatever reason, be it true or not true, that hasad enters a person and each step they make is against. They want to cut the person, they want to ignore the person, they want to be rude to the person. For what? Was something rude done to them? No. There's not even been any communication from other sides. But the f- mere fact that you're alive disturbs us because that's all somebody can say. Allah will ask them, why, why was, what was wrong with this person? Just the mere fact he's alive, I'm disturbed. Has he said something against you, your family, your understanding? Absolutely nothing. So why? Well because of hasad. Hasad enters into the heart of somebody, they no longer can hear what this person's saying or teaching and as a result they become blind to it. And from that blindness they begin to react in a way that can become very aggressive and very disturbing. And as a result they propagate that to other students teach the bad manners, teach the bad character, be very rude to them, be belligerent to their… And all from these are the realities of Sayyidina Muhammad That's the danger, that's the immense danger. In the last days that people become more and more filled with hasad. They're doing it now in dunya that when the person has more materials than the other person They intentionally try to collapse them, destroy them, bring them down. Then they do it in the last days in the spiritual realm. Why? They do it in in the realms of Islam and religion where in their hasad they try to take a person down. And what Sayyidina Jalal al-Deen and these are the, the ways of awliyaullah that by taking someone's light out it doesn't make your light to burn any greater. Your issue should be with Allah that, Ya Rabbi zidni ilma laduni wa hikmati bi salihin. Grant me Ya Rabbi the heavenly knowledges and the hikmah in which to use it. Your problem is with Allah not with the shaykh thinking, I'll take this shaykh down therefore my light will show more, no. As a matter of fact your light is diminishing every time you attack that shaykh and they become devoid of light because a hasad has overtaken them, anger has overtaken them, every type of bad characteristic has overtaken the insan. And that's the dangers and that's why the, the true guidance is to teach your students Whoever these people think they are, they lead a zikr, they lead a community, they're, they're here, they're there, teach and learn 
Divinely knowledges and teach manners, teach khuluq and character, good character. That which you don't like just stay quiet and Allah will bless you. That which you can't understand you stay quiet to it, Allah will bless you. As soon as you take the characteristics of shaitan and begin now to lunge attacks and how do you know whom Allah has favoured? And now you may fall under the character and characteristic in which Allah says, I will declare war against anyone who comes against my wali. If a person should by any chance be of a saintly character, Allah only knows, not the people whom think they're saintly, whom Allah grants and knows as a result of avoiding that difficulty. Mawlana Shaykh always said, keep the best of manners and the schools of manners and stay quiet. That which you don't understand stay quiet until Allah gives a hikmah and an understanding and a wisdom within the heart. But we understand why it's happening is hasad. So then those whom are taught by these guides, our students, is that you propagate the knowledge and sit back and watch the reaction like a science class. If the post begins to fizzle because people are going all over the place, then you understand the sickness of people. Their comments are like the experiment, why are they fizzling when you introduce a, a video, an article, a salawat? Like we describe when we go live on TikTok, oh he was going crazy as if you, 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 you put vinegar and, and sodium bicarbonate together and it and it started to foam everywhere. The two elements didn't seem to be matching but at least now you can see the sickness. So alhamdulillah always a reminder for myself and Holy Qur'an is guiding us this month. And Allah is reminding that even in the face of whatever types of knowledges they're not going to hear because hasad has overtaken them, pass them by and go to the next. Means that train is in a continuous movement, who's understanding, who's polite to it, who acknowledges it, alhamdulillah. And those whom don't, may Allah guide them. And those whom are belligerent and, and exhibit all sorts of nasty characteristics for no particular reason and lunge all sorts of slanderous accusations, may Allah send them to schools of knowledge and to the schools of adab and, and good manners. We pray that Allah grant us these lights, these blessings and the uh, oceans of uh, forgiveness and maghfirah. Subhan rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifu wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.